is, why they're harping on this formerly free labour? Why is he going on about this formerly free labour? Why is it so important for Weber? Why is it so important for Weber, this formerly free labour? Why is it better to be formerly free labour than it be slavery or serf labour? What is so good about formerly free labour? Well, I'll tell you what's so good about it, because it is remunerated with a wage. So this is the, the price side. But the point is that formerly free labour is a sale of labour power for a wage. And that means if it's sold for a wage, it's calculable. So many hours cost so many dollars. And not only that, if we don't need those labourers because we want to contract our business, we just fire those labourers. If we expand, we draw in more labourers. Basically, this idea of labour power, the sale of labour power for a wage, makes everything flexible and calculable for capitalism. That's why it is so central to Faber's definition of modern Western bourgeois rational capitalism. Because labour power can be sold for a price, a wage, and you can have so many hours... And this is at the discretion of the capitalist, how many hours. Okay, so that is at the heart of the definition, but we do indeed have bookkeeping and also the separation of work from residence. The same point is that every, every aspect of this modern Western bourgeois rational capitalism implies the importance of calculation of costs. Yes. All right. Right. Now the question for Weber is, where does this modern Western bourgeois, rational capitalism come from. It is so peculiar. We have never seen anything like it, he says. Where does it come from? Where does it come from? And how is he going to answer that question? Well, that is the interesting thing. How are we going to answer this question? So, how are we going to formulate the question first? If you were thinking about the origins of this system, rational organization, capitalist organization of formerly free labor, what might you think would be the way to examine the question of where it comes from. How would, what would you focus upon? You would focus upon perhaps where laborers come from. Where the working class comes from, from the proletariat. How do we get these wage laborers, right? How, you know, historically are they expelled from, expropriated from ex- their access to the means of subsistence? But that is not Weber. Weber poses this and translates this problem of the origins of modern Western bourgeois rational government into the question of the origins of what? Hands up. Neil? Yes, very good. Is it in there? You got the page number? No. No, it's nothing's underlined. No, no. It, it's amazing because you, Neil, are as brilliant as Weber. You don't have to read. You know all the answers. Just don't underline. Hmm? I just don't underline. You just don't underline. Ah, oh, you don't underline. What do you do? You take notes. Well, is there a page number where he says that really I am interested, therefore, in the origins of the bourgeois class? Does he say that anywhere, or am I imagining it? Is Neil imagining it? Anybody, anybody, anybody? Uh huh. Jamie Lou? Not yet? Greg? 23, 24, excellent. B, 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 just two. In the last paragraph on 23, he says, and, oh shoot, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Nothing's okay. Okay. The last paragraph. Hence, in a universal history of culture, the central problem for us is not, in the last analysis, even from a purely economic viewpoint, the development of capitalist activity as such, differing in different cultures, only inform the adventurer type or the capitalist uh, or capitalism in trade, war, politics, or administration as sources of gain or on the stock market uh-huh, or, or getting bailouts from the government and using it for bonuses. No comment. It is rather the origins of this sober bourgeois capitalism with its rational organization of free labor. Or, in terms of cultural history, the problem is that of the origin of what, Greg? No, or in terms of the cultural history, the problem is that of the origin of... I'm reading from the text. Andy, can you help him? Yes! Is that of the origin of the Western bourgeois class and of its peculiarities? A problem which is certainly closely connected with that of the origin of the capitalist organization of labor, but it's not quite the same thing. For the bourgeois as a class existed prior to the development of the peculiar modern form of capitalism, though it is true only in the Western Hemisphere. He is saying here that this peculiar form of capitalism that we have talked about in the context of capitalism in Marx, that Weber is characterizing as modern Western bourgeois rational capitalism, that we can think about its origins best if we think about the origins of the bourgeois class, because it was the bourgeois class that created this peculiar form of capitalism. So that is the project. Where does this Western bourgeois class come from? Yes. Right. Yes. So, what is Weber's answer? Well, that of course is the project of the book. So what essentially, what essentially, if you were to now summarize the rest of part of this chapter is, what essentially is Weber saying here? 
is that he has these three forms of capitalism. So the the oh, the wage labor, wage labor, and that's the rational capitalist organization of formerly free labor. Calculation, calculation. That's the bookkeeping. And then there's the separation of home and work. But there's also three other features of this capitalism. That's not right. That's not my, that's not a beautiful diagram. I think I'll do this differently. That's better. There are, there are three other features that he talks about, that Weber talks about. Three other features. Three other features that Weber talks about. Okay? That are necessary for this, for this Western bourgeois capitalist class to appear. Well, he talks about, on page 25, 25 I suppose, ah, uh, yes, on 25, the new paragraph. He says, among those of undoubted importance are the rational structures of law and of administration. For modern rational capitalism has need not only of the technical means of production, but of a calculable legal system and of administration in terms of formal rules. Okay, without it, adventurous and speculative trading capitalism and all sorts of politically determined capitalisms are possible. That, of course, has been suspended. That was what was, it was a deregulated capitalism that got us into this economic mess because there was not the rule of law regulating the operations of capitalism. So you need a rational legal legal system which will regulate the relations among capitalists much as Durkheim talked about it and make some, give some security and assurance some sort of certainty to the capitalist engaging in these transactions with other capitalists particularly competition he says without it adventurous and speculative trading capitalism and all sorts of politically determined capitalism are possible but no rational enterprise under individual initiative with fixed capital and certainty of calculations you need such a legal system and such administration have been available for economic activity in a comparative state of legal and formalistic perfection only in the occident we must hence inquire where that law can from. Among other circumstances, capitalist interests have in turn undoubtedly also helped, but by no means alone, nor even principally, to prepare the way for the predominance in law and administration of a class of jurists, specially trained in rational law. So that's one feature. And then there's another feature he talks about, and that on page 24, he talks about the importance of science. As who was telling me about science? Was it Rosa? Yes, that's another feature. Why is science, as he says on page 24, so important? Science is important for what? In this rash... Yes, Juliana? Optimization, uh huh, and efficiency. And of course, science does what? It helps us innovate. Science helps us introduce new technologies, new sources of power, new ways of organizing production. So, science is crucial too. So, what he is saying is that these are five features of Western, modern Western bourgeois rational capitalism. Five features. But he asks, and this is the interesting question: in reality, in history, in reality, in history, these features have appeared before. So if you look to China, you find the development of science, to some extent some sort of rational legal order. We've even had raised labor in ancient Rome. We've had the separation of home and house. We've had bookkeeping. We've, this has occurred in other parts of the world. But the whole configuration of modern Western bourgeois rational capitalism has one other feature that has never appeared anywhere else. And what is this other feature that is a characteristic of this modern Western bourgeois rational capitalism? What is this last sixth feature that has really never been seen before. Aman. Yes, the pursuit of money for its own sake, the pursuit of profit for its own sake. And Marx will talk about accumulation, 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 accumulation. This is a very weird thing, Weber says. Weber, Weber says it's irrational. Why is he saying it's irrational? This making of money for money's sake, pursuing profit on its own terms. Why is it irrational? Why does he conceive of it as irrational? Jason, what do you think? Yeah, Jason. Why is making money for money's sake irrational from Faber's point of view? Do you think it's irrational? Yeah, you think it's irrational. Kind of. What do you think, Nick? Anyway, see, what Faber says here is this is a very strange phenomenon. This idea of pursuing money for its own sake. The idea, because normally what do you do with money? 
Spend it. I knew you know that answer. Yes, you spend it. You know, normally you pursue economic activity in order to consume. And here you pursue economic activity in order to accumulate, to produce more and more widgets, more and more hamburgers. Hamburgers are all over the place. More and more. Don't eat any of them. <laughs> yes, and what does Weber call this? Pursuing of money for money's sake. It is the... It is the... Come on! Marianne, you must know this. No, 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 no. Before you get to the Protestant ethic. Before you get there, yes. Hmm? No, well, that's part of it, but no, it's not. It's, he has a special name for this. Disenchantment. No, it's not a very difficult name. It is the... the, the, the s- <laughs> Rachel? The spirit of capitalism. It is the spirit that lies behind modern Western bourgeois capitalism. That is to say, this pursuit of money for money's sake. Accumulation, 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 accumulation. Profit for profit's sake. The spirit of capitalism. These are the six aspects of modern Western bourgeois rational capitalism. And the one he's truly interested in is the spirit of capitalism that is carried by the Western bourgeois class. Why are these capitalists so nutty? Why are they so crazy as to want to pursue money for money's sake? Money is to be spent, to use to acquire things. Why do they pursue money for money's sake? That is the question that lies behind this book. Here we have the definition of modern Western bourgeois rational capitalism. And the key feature that is new in this novel that really gives character to this modern Western bourgeois rational capitalism is its spirit carried by the modern Western capitalists. And the question is why? And the answer is... And the answer is... Somebody gave it to me a few minutes ago. Somebody over here, I've forgotten who. Who said it? Marianne, yes. This is the Protestant ethic. Yes. So, that's essentially the argument of the book. That what is peculiar to modern Western bourgeois rational capitalism is the spirit of capitalism. And what Weber is interested in is how religion, how religion provided the foundations, provided the foundations for the economic activity that we know as modern Western capitalism. How religion provided those foundations. Perhaps normally we think that religion is the opposite of economic activity. But Weber's life project was to try and understand what is the relationship, how different religions had consequences, different consequences for economic behavior. And he was particularly interested in how the spirit of capitalism was linked to Protestantism, the Protestant ethic. Okay? Great. And it's going, it's going against Marx's idea of the superstructure. So the economic, you know, the drive, you know, the apparatus of now religion that's driving economic. That's an interesting question. That's an interesting question. We are talking here about what? The origins of modern Western bourgeois radical capitalism. The origins of capitalism. Does anybody remember how Marx talked about the origins of capitalism? Neil? The feudal modes of production were fettered. Yeah, the feudal mode of production were fettered, so that was the decline of feudalism. And then, how, where did capitalism come from? The old production declined, but where did capitalism come from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it turns out that Marx had lots of different answers to this question. Of course, one answer was actually the expulsion of workers from the rural areas to the towns where they became wage laborers and they could be employed. But yes, so, Greg, you're right that, that, see, Marx was really not concerned about, this is very important, Marx was really not concerned about the past. He had different stories about the origins of capitalism. Different stories. But he was really interested in what, Greg? How capitalism would decline and give rise to... Socialism, communism. So he was interested in the f- 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 future. Weber is interested in the origins of capitalism. And we'll see that when we get to the end of this book and we get to bureaucracy, his theory of capitalism itself is not that different from Marx's. But he was really obsessed about where this unique phenomenon came from. So that is why he went back and discovered these religious factors. Right? So in a sense you might say that the superstructure did, you know, the superstructural elements did affect the economic base, but he's not yet talking about the reproduction, the maintenance of capitalism, the dynamics of capitalism. He's talking about the origins. So this is about the origins of Western bourgeois rational capitalism. The origins. It's very important to distinguish between the origins and the reproduction. Origins of modern Western bourgeois rational capitalism. Okay. Is that clear, Greg? Yes. Yes. So... We have to be careful you compare like with like. So if you want to compare with Marx, you have to think about... Marx too had an analysis of the way politics actually drove the origins of capitalism. 